I posted a campaign video from 2015 on Twitter on Tuesday where the actors complained about their neighbor's children being kidnapped and the kidnappers had written them that they were next in line. The campaign was to vote President Buhari rather than President Jonathan, who, as Commander-in-Chief, had claimed he no longer knew what to do. People remembered that video and claimed they were scammed by the campaign, as insecurity and kidnappings are now daily. So this government, they owe you change, but you still voted for next level now. Abi, you are one of those who claim the election was rigged. The Supreme Court doesn't agree with you. Who is Nigeria's next messiah? I'm a member of a few political groups, not because I have any interest in joining politics, but because of my passion for good governance in Nigeria. So I constantly hear people ask me to come and do it better. I tell them, I criticize not because I can't do it better. I just hold the people who promise to, to their words. That's the job of a journalist anyway to hold the executive, legislature, and judiciary accountable. That's why we're the fourth estate of the realm in any democracy. I don't take the job of governance for granted. It must be difficult to lead a diverse group who want different things. But in a population of over 200 million, Nigerians can give more people the chance to try, especially people who vouch to have the answers, than perpetrate failures in government. This is my strong belief. We ought to keep voting our failures and never allow them back. We keep recycling the same old rulers, like they will suddenly have answers they didn't have years ago. Someone that didn't do anything to develop themselves in the years they've been out of government, yet you expect them to come back and turn Nigeria to El Dorado? Nigerians are the ones expecting a messiah instead of coming together to create systems agree on a working constitution, and stand by it regardless of political affiliations. Any human being can become a tyrant if the system allows. No one is perfect. But here we have institutions that allow a commander-in-chief to disobey our constitution, and everyone says, yes, sir. People are loyal to the president rather than to the constitution. So I get into government appoint all my friends, competent or not, and even create a new ministry for my mother. Opposition wills. Then they get into power and do even worse. She Nigeria with the lazy dance by. Isn't Nigeria collapsing? The current constitution was like a military decree passed down just the way the northern and southern protectorates were forcefully amalgamated in 1914. The 2014 conference was the opportunity we had to break it all down and reconstitute. But again, we allowed politics dictate the deliberations at the national conference. We can't keep doing the same thing and expect different results. Even if the best Nigerian becomes president in 2023, the system may still corrupt them. When are we all going to say enough is enough? Or are we waiting for a messiah from the South in 2023? No, but I thought you wanted to point us to a, to a messiah. Nigerians <laughs> 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 are always expecting a messiah. Oh, oh, um, but I, I, I agree, like I said also in my advocacy, you know, we want a messiah, but we will do everything to undermine the process that will lead to us, you know, um, getting that right. messiah. I, I, and that's why I also, this is instructive, uh, Chuka's advocacy now saying, look, Whatever you are, be the best of that thing. It yeah. is those individual efforts that will bring us together and Wada. help us to understand. Because that end SARS protest would not have been defeated if the government did not know that there's a pool of some uneducated people that they can use True. to fight the educated ones. And but so, it's not defeated yet, so. If, we, if we keep, you know, the educated ones keep advocating for and on behalf of the uneducated ones and find a way to educate them and bridge that gap. Very soon, these people you call leaders will run away from Nigeria. Um, may I ask a question, though, um, Emeka? Because why would the security man keep on saying, Madam, anything for us? You know, and they I'm drive. I'm supposed to talk on this advocacy. <laughs> 
I'm asking a question. I'm, I'm throwing it open in terms of how does Nigeria get better with the culture of entitlement and getting everything begging, that begging. I can. Yes. I, I think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a symptom or it's a, it's a collapse of the system um, where, you know, um, there's no trust in authority. There's no trust in the system. Um, there's no dependency. So the only thing that's left to everyone is to feed off one another. Yeah, true. So either, either by force, so if I can take it, I'll take it. If I can con you and take it, with why you or 419 or whatever, I'll take it. Yeah. Um, or I beg you for it. We used to have this joke that the best way to, when you meet a policeman on the road, you know, growing up in the barracks, there was this tendency that you either, you know, those when we were much younger, we pull rank. Mm. We're like, do you, you know, you know, where you know who I am. You know, we speak in a certain military lingo. And, and it guy, works. And it works. Or if you're cut out, you beg the policeman. There are two ways. So you don't use force to say, you know, who, who are you talking to? And then, you know, use chance him. Or when you get there, he stops you. You say, ah, oh, Ghana, we oui, win oui, now. You know, because <laughs> that is, so there's no, and if you, if you look at that, there's no dependency in a system that functions, yeah. you know, legitimately, and, and, no social and, safety yeah. net. So you see that. So you'd have to find a way. And that's really what's happening. So whether mm. you see them at the airports, and, you know, I don't know, you saw that thing where the Zambians, uh, the yeah. Ugandans were making a jest of us yeah. uh, a few weeks ago. How come into Nigeria? Everybody's begging from the airport. Yes. <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> begging. Okay, welcome. What's in your brain? Yeah. Uh, Chuka, it's, Ch it's, so, sorry, quickly, Chuka. I wanted to find out if... Uh, the, yeah, Chuka, the, in the Queen's country, the, is that the, the way they the, beg in the airport too? Well, I don't know how we're going to... This Messiah matter is a very serious question. Um, <laughs> I, I, it ties in again with even what I was saying about glorifying the wrong people and not accepting to judge people. We have to judge people. Let nobody deceive you about oh, yeah, what the I Bible says or does not say. We have to judge people properly. And if we know a man to have done something very bad, let's not bring him forward for spare. governor, president, senator, whatever. One governor became a governor through killings. I'm not saying he killed anybody, but there was ruthless killing going on before he could become a governor that perhaps was even rigged. Today, what is he doing? He's putting up posters to be president. Mm. Yes. He and denies that, that there's COVID. I, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, Nigerians will in the end vote for this man. And you'll be shocked. Not in 2023. Is he, I said they want is to be a negotiator in chief. There, 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 <laughs> there, there are some a rather simplistic uh, uh, approach I, I like to put down on this. And it involves numbers. In 2019 presidential election, where you have the total number of votes by PDP and APC being 26 million. million. Meanwhile, the number of people between ages of 18 and 39 are about 60 million people. If you take Lagos, there were over 6 million registered voters, only 1 million plus votes. Where, what were the 5 million other voters doing on election day? Uh, I can answer that question. Looking yeah, for you. food, though. I can answer that question for you because I was part of that process. You remember when hmm. Jega came? Jega said the electoral register was largely flawed and so they needed to clean it up and so they what they did was they introduced biometrics for the first Correct. time yeah. and you know after the biometric a lot of people did multiple registration and so they introduced automated fingerprint identification system and so this automated fingerprint identification system will match your biometrics mm -hmm. with your facials and your name so the moment they did that the, the, the numbers dropped drastically. Yeah, that and is then, wait, the, now, the no, let me, no, wait, let me That is where you are happened. comparing the let registers no, of previous wait. year no, no. with 2019. This, no, the current one. Let mm. me tell you what that happened. The moment they, that is because it's the same Jagas register that they are still using. So when the numbers dropped, all the governors started complaining. No, 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 no. You have to leave it as it is because it is the numbers that they used to rig. And that's why when vote counts and you use biometric, Journalists will tell you there was large turnout of voters, but at the end of the day, the actual number of voters, when you put it together, is less than a million. What it means is that our voting strength and our numbers are overrated. Go and check it.
it, 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 comparing previous year's voters' register. No, I'm talking about this year. current so voters' the, register. The, the current register was based on biometrics. This is, that is the biometric I'm exactly. telling you. Exactly. So after, you the says, after the biometrics says, after the biometrics says you have five we million shared, or six we million shared voters. voters card. Why we, were people not not coming? Do out you know how many voters' cards are still with? Are we saying in a, in a city think, of twenty million people, let's not even, is only one million valid voters let's not, that live there? Let's not argue yeah, about numbers. It's not possible. Let's argue. I think what I take from from <laughs> from, from, from point is is the fact that there's a there's a, a sea change that's about to occur with more people who did not vote before, did not participate, coming out to participate. I think that's the point you were trying to make. Well, and, and can we hold their hands in 2023 and, and, and drag them to the Drag pool. them there and ensure that they are not voting because based on 2,000 naira for bread or one Mr. Egungun that promised exactly. that he will give them 35% uh, women <laughs> agenda. Yeah. I'm just saying. Time is never our friend on this program. However, the advocacy continues on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa. The hashtag is AdvocateNG. Or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, same hashtag, the AdvocateNG. To catch up on previous broadcasts, please go to plustvafrica.com forward slash the AdvocateNG. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till next week, same time. Oh, it's my birthday. So, we are going to lunch. <laughs> Till next time, same time on the station, let's keep advocating for a better society. See you next week. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.